The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back, everybody. You're watching theCUBE. We're live here at Hadoop Summit 2014. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. Uh, we've got a really interesting guest coming up. Uh, as everybody knows, uh, Hadoop uh, really kind of was born in some of the web companies and, and one of the most prominent being Yahoo. Uh, we're really uh, honored to have Jay Rossiter, SVP of Platforms and Personalization Products at Yahoo, uh, join us here for this segment. Thanks for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, so we were talking a little bit before we got started, and you've kind of been you know, involved in this journey uh, with Hadoop and Yahoo and Hortonworks from the very beginning. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's been great. So um, you know that, that um, we gave birth to essentially Hadoop for you know, since roughly 2005, 2006. And in 2011, we uh, joined up with Benchmark Capital and, and spun out Hortonworks with a lot of the core developers, that, the, some of the top developers that actually created Hadoop and we started the company. And, and so I've been involved um, from before um, Hortonworks and all the way through mm -hmm. till now. Well, if you don't mind, I'd love to kind of just take a trip down memory lane and talk a little bit about those early days, 2005, 2006. What was, yeah. uh, what was the environment like? And I came a little later. Oh, a little later. <laughs> so, well, tell us about when you did join sure, and, sure, and what sure. the environment sure. was like and, and sure. so the, take us the, from there. The so, so what happened was the Hadoop project started really with search at Yahoo. We were mm -hmm. trying to harness big data to make search work and then over time, it started really evolving and taking on a more prominent role in the company. And what we realized was that this was revolutionary technology and we wanted to keep that technology rolling and we felt that open source was really the way to do it so that there would be a community of people working on the technology and making it real. Mm -hmm. um, and then that would allow us to keep leveraging it and then use it to power our business. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I understood that, you know, Yahoo obviously isn't an enterprise software company, so we started an enterprise software company to do that, but the, the whole idea was to do it through the Apache Foundation mm -hmm. so that it was open source, right? right. And it's, it's been great. You know, so if you, if you kind of fast forward and you look at this conference, which is incredible, I don't know if you saw today that half the people at the conference mm -hmm. hadn't been here before and there's over a thousand different companies represented, mm -hmm. it's incredible. It's been wonderful, right? And, and what you have now is you have exactly what we were hoping for. You have this juggernaut, which is Hadoop, the whole family of products of which we, d we also develop on. You have Hortonworks as, you know, sort of at the center, the nexus of this, and working with the community to make it happen. And then we have technology that is not only revolutionizing the world in many ways, mm -hmm. but it's something that we use at Yahoo to power our entire business. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's actually working incredibly well. Well, so it's interesting. It makes a lot of sense to me why, uh, from Yahoo's perspective, you want, you'd want to keep this open source because yep. it's, uh, you, just, you, you enable so much more innovation when you involve the community. When you, were, uh, when, when you and your team were discussing spinning out Hortonworks, um, I, I imagine you talked about different business models. Yep. And why was, I, like I said, I, I totally understand why it's, it's great for Yahoo for mm -hmm. Hadoop to remain open source. Why is it equally important for Hortonworks to be open yeah. source? And how well, did that decision come yeah. about? No, 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 no. It's, it's a very good question. So you can understand for us, right? Mm -hmm. we, we just wanted, uh, you know, as many people powering this and we want to use it and, and we use it at such a scale that having an open source solution made sense for Yahoo. For Hortonworks, the key was that, that the Hortonworks team knew, understood, and understand today if you actually talk to them that this type of disruption and this type of technology to really have it grow and take off and change the way basically data works throughout the world is something that's beyond what one company can do. Mm -hmm. And so the, the primary model was that um, while Hortonworks certainly is a commercial entity and wants to profit by it, right, but the, the, the idea is that if they had gone alone and done this, it would not create the, the, the revolution and wouldn't have the level of innovation that it actually has now. And you could see it. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you, like if you think about what Hadoop is, you know, a lot of people think of it as just a core, like HDFS and MapReduce, but there's a whole family of things around it, right? right. There's the evolution of where the platforms move to in the next generation, which has been um, like with Yarn and mm -hmm. Tez project and stuff like that, but also there are many products that have come out of other companies, you know, like HBase or Storm, mm -hmm. you know, so there's a variety of technologies that people have contributed to mm -hmm. and have helped really develop and to, to foster that innovation. So it makes sense. Mm -hmm. if. We had created Hortonworks and they had gone on as a private entity. Mm -hmm. 
you wouldn't have, Hadoop today wouldn't be what it was, what mm -hmm. it is, right? Instead you would have splintering and different uh, products that people would build and none of them would be as good as what's happened through the whole community effort. Mm -hmm. uh, but is, it, is there a trade-off for Hortonworks from a business model perspective in terms of ramping up and getting that, that, that growth factor uh, with the model being you know, support, basically support maintenance services versus having you know, your private IP that you're selling licenses to and that kind of thing. Is it, is it a longer time frame? Were there any trade-offs that you thought about? Um, you know, did you ever consider doing something more like the open core model and keeping some parts open and, and yeah, so proprietary? I mean, what, were the, yeah. what was the debates like internally, or was there any? So the question you're asking is, um, was this the best model to monetize, is basically what you're asking, right? And, you know, and, and the answer clearly for Hortonworks, and you should talk to Rob Bearden about it, is yes, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Hortonworks succeeds as the ecosystem grows mm -hmm. and as the world uses it. You know, so if you have a pie that's this big and you take half of it, that's interesting. If you have a pie that's that big and you take a third of it, you're doing better, right? <laughs> so, you know, overall, the fact that, that they've embraced the open source model has allowed it to grow to a point where it's, you know, everybody's talking about big data. I mean, it's, it's in the meme of, of, like my mother will talk about, but she won't know what it is, but she'll talk about big data, right? And that happened, you know, to a large degree because of the open source play here. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I think it was, to me, was the right model. So let's talk about Yahoo and, and the way you are contributing still today to Hadoop. Um, so do you, you and members of your team dedicated to contributing back to the open source yeah. code? And I know you work with Hortonworks to test and develop uh, the different uh, projects associated with uh, Hortonworks. You just kind of, for our audience who isn't yeah, really yeah, familiar yeah. with Yahoo's role, sure. um, tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Sure. So, so as I mentioned, early on, you know, we really incubated the whole thing mm -hmm. and um, really got the industry rolling. Um, the story we haven't told um, has been our role both with Hadoop in general and with Hortonworks since the spin out, which was in 2011. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is we've, made, we've remained major contributors to Hadoop and we have many, many committers and PMC members and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But the, the interesting thing has been the relationship that we have with Hortonworks, mm -hmm. right? And the, and the way the relationship is, is that we, we have almost a virtual team on how we work together on an engineering level. So we, we pick projects together, we set roadmaps together, mm -hmm. and we found that probably about 80% of what we do and what Hortonworks does mm -hmm. overlaps in terms of what we're trying to actually accomplish. Mm -hmm. Hortonworks obviously does many things that are important for an enterprise market um, that may not be important to Yahoo as an entity that runs it, and then we have some things that may not be, but overall there's probably about 80% overlap. So what happens mm -hmm. is we set these roadmaps and we work on these projects um, advancing them, and then we harden them because we, the way we use Hadoop, at the scale we use it, and the types of use cases that we have, crush the technology, mm -hmm. in a sense. And, and it's through that, that beating of the technology and really driving it to quality is what makes the product um, overall excellent mm -hmm. and really work. So a great example would be um, yarn. Right, so we worked, you know, Yarn was an idea we had before we even did the spin out and we worked together with Hortonworks on Yarn. Mm -hmm. um, came out in October of last year as uh, HTTP, right? And we've now, you know, to get Yarn, which is really a complete remake of how Hadoop works, right? And just changing the game in terms of how you can get data and different kinds of data. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was a journey. It took a long time to really make it battle ready, right? And that's mm -hmm. something we did at Yahoo, driving it through our 32,000 servers, <laughs> our 26 million jobs, mm -hmm. you know, you can imagine, right? And it's that type of, of partnership, both on the development, but also on just making it real, that then allows us to give it back to the community where there's a real product mm -hmm. that works and people can rely on. So right. it's, it's, and we do that across many different things. Mm -hmm. So it's been put through its paces, and if Yahoo can't break it, then you, you can be pretty sure uh, if you're a more traditional enterprise that, that it's going to be yeah, you know, no, it's going to hold up. No, it's absolutely true. Uh, so, but so I did want to pick on something a little bit more. So you mentioned sure. that there's kind of that 80% overlap, and there are critics, uh, maybe in the more conservative circles, who would say, well, you know, big data, yeah, the big web companies, it makes sense for them, but why does it make sense for me as a more traditional company? Maybe, maybe it doesn't. Um, but you're saying there is a significant overlap between what Hortonworks is trying to do. So maybe uh, rebut some of yeah, those, yeah, yeah, yeah. those no, criticisms. Yeah, 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 no, 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 no. So, so look at this way. I think, in general, most companies now understand that harnessing data and harnessing unstructured data mm -hmm. or harnessing data quickly is a business differentiator. Mm -hmm. 
that's what makes this whole market happen, right? So I don't think there's any question about um, the power of data, mm -hmm. whatever it is, whether you're in banking or you're in sensors or you're in machines, internet of things, anything, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't really matter. There's value if you're an analyst, you want to have analytics, you know, whether you're in the NSA, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but the, but, but every, you realize that being able to manipulate data and analyze it and get value out of that data quickly is important for everybody, right? What we do is, um, we're a little ahead of the market in some cases, in that um, we, need, we, we need to drive many diverse use cases through data, because the heart of an internet company really is data and what you do yep. with it, personalizing, advertising, and that kind of thing, right? But a lot of the core technology that's used is exactly the same, mm -hmm. right? And so you can imagine that you take that technology and you're leading in many ways what the technology needs to deliver, and then it gets packaged up and platformized in many ways, mm -hmm. or the companies that build, the, like, like Hortonworks, see where it's going, and they actually create those capabilities. Mm -hmm. you know, so, just some simple examples, right? If you just look at what's happened with, with the Stinger mm -hmm. um, initiative, and Tez, and Hive, yeah. you know, who wouldn't benefit being able to have fast analytics, right. and be able to answer business questions quickly? We do, mm -hmm. right? We run our business on it, but everybody needs right. to, to be able to do that right clearly. Or, if you take, um, you know, the ability to do iterative processing or stream mm -hmm. processing where you're looking at things that are just happening and you're analyzing it, makes sense in many, many industries, including ours, where we'll take a technology like Storm mm -hmm. or we'll take like an H-based technology and we'll put it into a bundle to create a solution. So it's the same kinds of things. The only difference is that um, we do it at such scale and we're also pushing the envelope on, on some of the uses. Right. Two quick examples. Sure. Um, one would be you know, latency. We're very, very focused on taking latency out of stuff. So how fast can I get an answer out of something? Mm -hmm. Really important when we're trying to personalize an experience for you, mm -hmm. and we want to take into account things you're doing now, and we don't want to wait, right? right? Or we want to see if anybody, if there's any abuse happening in our systems, and we want to detect it now, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot involved in taking the latency out of these systems mm -hmm. that are really important. Just as just a yep. very you know kind of a very simple example. Mm -hmm. Another one is machine learning, mm -hmm. right? Deep insights, um, and you can read a lot people talking about how you get insights into data, facial recognition, that kind of thing. And deep insights and, and machine learning is key to what we do. So as an example, you know we have Flickr, and with Flickr we have mm -hmm. you know a corpus of something like 10 billion photos, and we have processed all those photos, looking through and tagging animals and scenes and stuff like that, we can tag it all, mm -hmm. but now what do we want to do? On an ongoing basis, when somebody uploads a photo, we want to instantly tag it, which requires taking all the latency out and being able to take the models mm -hmm. that we developed and perfected as we go through the full corpus and doing it on the next one. Mm -hmm. That's true of what everybody needs in many, in many businesses. Right. You, want to, you want to learn from the data you have and then you want to train it so that you could do something more intelligent mm -hmm. with the new data that comes in. Right. So it's just a matter of being a little bit ahead of the curve, and what happens is with the partnership with Hortonworks, we're living it together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they're seeing where we are ahead of the curve to some degree, uh -huh. we're also hardening things, and then they're working obviously with other partners also, but it lets them also be a little ahead of the curve and then have product that works in a more robust manner mm -hmm. overall. Well, so you touched on a couple of things that you're doing at Yahoo. I mean, I, I would love to hear a little bit more, maybe a couple more examples of some of the more things that kind of get you excited that you're using Hadoop for. Uh, maybe if you can give an example, something that's customer facing, something that I might see as a user, maybe something behind the scenes, whether it's to detect well, sure. fraud or whatever There's the case is. There's many, many, many examples. Let's, let's, okay, give you a couple of examples. Sure. Um, so one of the things we're doing is um, we've, we have a, a large investment in native advertising. Mm -hmm. So native ads, you probably seen like things you've seen in your Twitter stream or something like that, mm -hmm. and we have native ads. If you go to yahoo.com or, or many of our, our media properties, you'll see the stream, and in that stream there are, are, are native ads, so ads that look like the content. And we do two things. One is we actually will personalize the content you see, so the news you see is different than mine, mm -hmm. and we'll also personalize the ads that you see. Mm -hmm. And the ads you'll see are different than mine. And what we need to do to make that happen is we have to do massive extraction of information mm -hmm. from the content and from the ads to actually understand what they are, and then we have to understand a lot about you, right? And your behaviors and things you've chosen and, and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and feed that into a model so then we could match the content and match the ads that are most likely to interest you, and then you click on the ads and we can monetize the ads. So it's, it's a way of, of just you know, basic, 
taking content, understanding it, choosing what you should see, and then understanding what ads actually would be of more interest to you. So you actually would be more likely to engage with those ads, which is how we actually monetize those ads. Right, so that's, that's an analytic problem, number one, but it's also an operationalizing, you also have to operationalize yeah. that insight. Yeah, and there's uh, lots of examples. I'll give you another yeah. example. So if you just stick on advertising, mm -hmm. if you're an advertiser or an agency and you want to run an ad campaign, mm -hmm. you want to be able to hit a button Put your, you know, basically put your bid in, set up your campaign, and you want to see it happening now. Mm -hmm. Which means lots of calculations about how that will play, what, what, the, what, the, what the bid landscape looks like, mm -hmm. you know, how the other players are, what's happening in the marketplace, what your budget is. Mm -hmm. Instantaneously computed, determining what ads then to serve by understanding you and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then we want to give you the ability to, on demand, get a report and understand How's it going? How's your campaign going? What demographic are you hitting? How much budget have you gone through? Mm -hmm. What you know? What you, what you, what your what your average spend is? Mm -hmm. Instantaneously to allow you then to adjust your campaign if you want, to really to really right. move it where it needs to go. So all that's about crunching data, mm -hmm. right? At the at the start, crunching data to understand the content, crunching mm -hmm. data to understand the ads. Crunching mm -hmm. data to choose what to show in a bidded marketplace, which is like a, an exchange, like a stock yeah. exchange, and then in a reporting uh, point of view. Mm -hmm. And all that is utilizing Hadoop in different ways and different components to create a solution mm -hmm. end to end. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a fascinating, I love it. Uh, right. we, we could talk all day. Unfortunately, we've got to wrap up soon, but I wanted to ask one last question. Sure. I mean, if we're looking out, if you can put your prognosticator's hat on, uh -oh. where, is Apache, <laughs> where is Apache Hadoop going? Um, when you take into account, both, you know, there's you know, the vendor sure. ecosystem, what's happening there, you've got the community, you've got practitioners like yourselves. Where do you see Hadoop going in the next yeah. one, two, even maybe five sure. years? So the way I look at Hadoop, and this is interesting, because you know, people have different ideas of what it is, mm. and to, Hadoop to me is a family of technologies that work together and play together mm -hmm. to manipulate data to value, right? And the, one of the things that's interesting about Hadoop is the level of innovation that's been happening, the level of change, the speed of change. Like, you know, like the MapReduce paradigm is kind of moving into a little bit into the sunset. Tez is there. Yarn came out that fundamentally changed the game because mm -hmm. now you can get a data and you could use it in many different ways, right? Yeah. And, and the way I see it is the demand for data will only increase. Mm -hmm. If you think about the Internet of Things, which I know is a new buzzword, but it's everything. Sure. For real, I'm right? My and, 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 and you yeah, think yeah. about deep learning, which is understanding Do dozens, hundreds, thousands of characteristics of data, which requires much greater processing, mm -hmm. you know that it has to evolve. And you know that some parts will get antiquated, others, other, thing, other parts will actually join the Hadoop family, mm -hmm. you know, and add to it. Like now we have streaming, or we have incremental iterative processing, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I expect that evolution will continue, because it's a living, breathing object. And so the key is to keep the community intact so everybody's playing in it, right. have vendors who are looking out and understand what's happening, and then engage with vendors like us mm -hmm. who are dealing with a scale that frankly is above the market, but also driving a lot of those requirements into the market. So that's why I see, so to me it's more of a, an evolving beast that will just get better and better and better as we keep working on it. Absolutely. Well, great stuff. Jay, I, we, we could talk for hours, but uh, unfortunately we got to wrap up. But thanks so much for taking the time. I appreciate it. Uh, Jay Rossiter from Yahoo. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest live here at Hadoop Summit. <laughs>